Okay, let's have our first lecture for Math 1610. Okay, the goal for today is to learn a lot of the foundational terminology and definitions and then practice using that terminology. Okay, so first, let's say what the word statistics means. Statistics is the collection analysis interpretation try to fit this in the screen here and presentation of information. Okay. The information I, I won't write this all out, but it would be the information collected, analyzed, interpreted, and presented. Okay, but let's just say the information is called, I don't care how you say this, data or data, it's up to you. Okay. The singular version of that, because the word the word uh, data is plural, the singular is datum. Okay. All right. So there's two important definitions. All right. Now. There's two kinds of statistics. Let me write this out for you. You can do two different things with statistics. It depends upon your goal, okay? If your goal is to organize and summarize, then what you're doing is you are describing a situation and that's called descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics. Okay, so that is using statistics to organize and summarize so when you hear somebody say the median housing price in Stanislaus County. Okay, they're describing a way of measuring how much houses cost. So that would be descriptive statistics. Okay, now what if somebody wanted to use that information to decide what to do in the future? Okay, then they're, in that case, they're not just describing something, but they're using statistics in order to um, in order to draw a conclusion okay and that is called inferential statistics okay that's using statistics To draw a conclusion. 
And, and those are the two kinds of things that statistics are used for. They're either used to organize and summarize, or they are used to draw a conclusion. And so that would be descriptive statistics or inferential statistics. Okay. All right. Now, more key terms. Okay. These are very important. I'm going to say the, the next four together. Okay. And then I'll define them. So there's population, sample, statistic, and parameter. Those four terms, you need to know what they mean and, uh, very importantly, not to get them confused with each other. Okay? So, a group of people or objects that you wish to study is called a population. Okay? Now, oftentimes a population is too big to study. What if you wanted to find the average age of a United States um, resident? Okay? There's too many people to study. I forget how, how much is, how many people are in the United States. I can't remember, but I know it's a lot. Okay. I'm, I'm wanting to say 200 million, but I don't know if that number is just coming out of nowhere or not. Uh, but the point is, theoretically, you could study that population by asking every single person how old they are, but it's not realistic. Okay. So what we do is we ask some people how old they are, and then we use that to try to, you know, um, it's called extrapolate into the larger population, okay? So the group or objects of people that you wish to study is called the population, okay? The subset of the population that you actually take into account is called a sample. Let me give another example of this. Have you heard recently um, where they say Donald Trump and Joe Biden, you know, they're running for president, right? And so they say, you know, oh, Joe Biden's ahead by this much or Donald Trump is ahead by this much, right? So what's the population that they studied is the population of all United States voters, okay? But let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever called you and asked you who you're voting for because they're because they're wanting to do a poll? Maybe, but I'm willing to bet probably not, right? So how do they know what the standings are if they haven't asked everybody? That's because what they've done is they've asked some people. I don't know how many, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands, and they they do what statisticians do, which we're going to learn how to do in this class, but of course you're not going to be a professional statistician just from this one class because it gets very, very complicated, but you're going to learn the ideas. They ask, let's just say, several hundred people who they would like to vote for, and then based upon that, they extrapolate what they think the trend is for the whole country. Okay, so the people they actually call is called the sample. 
the population is all of the voters in the United States. Okay? So population is the thing you want to know about and sample is the, th is the part that you actually study. Okay? All right, now, those two go together, population and sample, okay? Okay, now, statistic. All right. Whoops, that's red. I don't want red. All right, a number that represents a property I said statistic in a, a minute ago but I actually want to do a, a different word first called parameter a number that represents a property of the sample I mean sorry I'm sorry I got that word wrong of the population is called a parameter. Population parameter, they both start with P, okay? All right, now a number that represents a property of a sample is called a statistic. Sample and statistic, they go together. Okay, so we have these four words here population, sample, parameter, and statistic. Okay, so the population is the group that you are wanting to know about. And you would have a parameter of the population that you're wanting to study. Like, let's just say this, the average height of US citizens. Okay, that might be something you want to try to get your mind around. What's the average height of US citizens? Okay, so in that case, the population would be US citizens and the parameter would be the height of the, of the US citizens. Okay. But you would not measure every citizen. There's too many. It would take too long. So you would only measure a subgroup, and that would be your sample. And the height of the people in the sample, you would write that data down, and that data would be called a statistic. Do you see how that is? So you want to know about the population the quality that you're studying about the population is called a parameter, okay? You only take a smaller group called the sample and you measure that same quality for the sample, but when you're looking at a sample, that quality is called a statistic, okay? Remember, population and parameter go together. They both start with P. Sample and statistic go together. They both start with S. Okay. One more definition and then we'll practice using these words here. Okay, the last one I want to define is called um, variable or actually more technically is called a random variable. Okay. So 
a random variable. is a characteristic or measurement that can be determined for each member of a population. That was a long sentence, so give me a minute to write it down. Let me scroll up a little so you can see that whole thing there. Okay, now let me explain a little bit. That sounds an awful lot like a parameter, doesn't it? Well, the idea is this. When we say variable, that refers to, here's how I would say it. I would say that variable is a letter that stands for a characteristic. Okay, I wrote it the way it is in our book. But, but I would say that the random variable myself, I would say, isn't actually the characteristic that you're measuring but it's a letter that stands for that characteristic, you see? Like, if I wanted to measure the height of U.S. citizens, like I said a minute ago, then, then that would be my parameter, and I would, I would say something like X equals, and I would write, say, X is going to stand for their height, right? So X would be the variable. It's not any different than you're used to in any other math class, but I wanted to write it down anyways because I want to tell you that there's two kinds of variables. Numerical, which is exactly what it sounds like, it's a number, okay? One kind of variable is a numerical variable. Okay, like height or weight. Oh, that should say not IE, but it should say EG. Okay, height or weight. They're numbers. Okay, the other kind of variable is called a categorical variable. Such as maybe hair color or political affiliation. Those aren't numbers. Their categories. Okay. All right. So what I would like to do now is just practice using all of these words. So I'm going to read something to you. And then we are going to de decide in that uh, short sample I'm going to read. What's the population? What's the sample? What's the parameter? What's the statistic? What's the variable? And what's the data? Okay, so that's, that's six things that we're going to pick out. Okay, so I'm going to read it first, and then I'll write it down. But first, just listen. It says... We want to know the average amount of money first-year college students spend at ABC College on school supplies that do not include books. We randomly surveyed 100 first-year students at the college. 
three of those students spent a hundred and fifty dollars two hundred dollars and two hundred and twenty five dollars respectively okay I'm gonna write that down I'll try to shorten it just a little bit to save some time but I don't want to leave out anything important okay so it says we want to know the average amount of money by the way we won't actually use the word average a lot another word for average that we use in statistics is called mean so we'll usually say the mean amount okay but I think we'll get to that later for today I just want to use the word average so we want to know the average amount of money I'm just going to say freshmen instead of first year students. I know it's not always exactly the same thing, but it's pretty much the same and it'll save some time to say freshmen. Okay. Spend at ABC College on non textbook. school supplies okay so we survey 100 students oh sorry 100 freshmen okay three of the respondents, that means people who responded, and so it says three of the 100 people, spent, okay, so they say $150 for one person, $200 for the, uh, the next person, and the third one was 225 respectively. Do you know what that word means when it's used that way? Respectively means when you say that there's three people and then you list these three numbers. You're saying that the first number goes with the first person, the second number goes with the second person, and the third number goes with the third person. That's what the word respectively means. Okay, so what I want to practice is let's find the population the sample the parameter and the statistic sorry I had to pause there I'm trying to think about how much room I'm going to need. Okay. And then variable. And data. Okay, so let's write down those six to see if we understand the way to use these words properly, okay? Let me shrink this down so we can see everything at once. Okay, so what's the population? The population is the, is the group of people that we want to know about, right? Who do we want to know about here? We want to know about freshmen at ABC College. That is our population, okay? So I'm going to say all freshmen at ABC College. That's our population that we want to know about. Okay? What's the sample? Well, notice we did not ask all of the freshmen how much money they spent. We only asked a hundred of them. Those people make up our sample. Okay? 
So sample is the 100 freshmen we surveyed. Okay. Okay, what's the parameter? The parameter is the thing about the population that we are wanting to study about the population. Okay, so what is the parameter here? The parameter is the amount of money that the population, I'll underline the population in blue, but I'm underlining the parameter in red. The parameter is the amount of money that the population spends on non-textbook school supplies. Okay, I guess the word spend should be underlined in red. So I underlined the population in blue and the parameter in red. Okay, so I'm going to write down here for parameter the amount of money an ABC freshman spends on non-book supplies. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I left out a word there. I le left them off. The word average. I didn't see that. So let me squeeze that in here. Sorry about that. Okay. So what is the statistic? Well, remember, we didn't ask everybody in the freshman class. We only asked 100 people. Okay, the statistic is the average amount of money spent by the 100 people sampled, or let's say surveyed, that's the word we've been using. Okay. All right. What is the variable in this case? All right, so here's where you're actually going to see the difference between variable and uh, parameter okay the parameter is the average amount of money spent by the freshman the variable is the actual amount of money spent by each individual person okay let me write this for variable the amount of money spent by each individual freshman. I'm not going to keep repeating on non-textbook school supplies. Okay, I think it's okay if we leave that off here. Okay, so just for a second before we do the last one, let's just look at the difference between variable and parameter. Okay, let's let's put it in, in light of another example. Suppose there's five people in the room and you wanted to know the average height of the people in the room. And maybe you calculated that the average height is five foot seven. Well, it might be the case that not a single person in the room is five foot seven, right? If that's the average height, that doesn't mean that anybody is actually that exact height, right? That's just the average of the heights, you see? So in that case, where you're wanting to find the average height of the people in the room, then that's a very small population, 
okay? And the average height is your parameter, but each individual height, that's your variable, okay? All right, now, when you measure the variable, I say, uh, I say measure because in these examples it's a numerical var uh, variable, right? So when you measure the variable, what do you do? You write down the numbers, right? Each of those numbers is called a datum, and the plural is that the numbers are called data, okay? So in this case, the data that we were given were $150 and $200 and $225 and I'm assuming they didn't say it but I'm assuming that there must be nine I'm um, sorry there must be 97 more data points besides those because they surveyed 100 people they only told us three of the data points that they got I'm assuming there's 97 more Okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. And there's other examples just like this in the book. There's three more, okay, in the textbook, which is free. No reason to not have the book because you can download it for free. And just go through those three examples. We did example 1.1 just now. And if you go through 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, it'll help solidify these ideas a bit more if you feel like you're a little bit shaky. Okay, that's the end of this lecture.